Hello, hello, dear data scientists and developers. Welcome to another video from Kern. My name is Leo and I'm a data scientist. And today I'm really glad to be able to show you our first end-to-end -end use case. Because today I'm going to give you a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to build your very own stock sentiment classifier. And we are going to build this stock sentiment classifier without the help of any pre-built data sets or um, language models. No, no, we are not going to do that here. Instead, we are going to scrape our own um, data and we are going to label this data very easily and very quickly. And we're going to use this, um, this data set to create our very own sentiment classifier. So let's check out what's on our agenda for this video. First of all, I'm going to show you how you can scrape headlines for stock news from a website called Finwiz, which is a very cool site um, for finding uh, news related to stocks and finance. And we are going to save that scraped data in a CSV format. We are then going to take that data and load it into the Kern refinery, which is our main tool for labeling data. I'm also going to show you how you can set up your own project and how you can get started. And uh, I'm going to guide you through the whole labeling process, which first of all includes some manual labeling, but not too much. Don't be afraid because I'm also going to show you how you can leverage the whole labeling process with our Kern refinery. Because we are not going to use a pre-built data set, we need to find a source for our data on our own. And to do that, I'm going to use a site called Finwiz, which is a really, really cool website for stocks and financial information and also news about companies. And to show you how these news look like i'm going to head over to the site for microsoft because i think everyone um, should know microsoft and here you can see the obligatory charts for um, for the company and some financial information which is all nice and good but what we are really interested in is this section further down here here you get a collection of news articles from various uh, sites such as the Wall Street Journal, uh, Yahoo Finance, you have Bloomberg, um, you have uh, Reuters. So really reliable and good um, news sources, I would say. And we're going to scrape this section down here to build our own data set of stock news headlines. Now that we have found a cool site on which we can gather the data for our data set, it is time to do the actual scraping. And I'm going to do the scraping with Python and a cool Python library called Beautiful Soup. Of course, you can find all the code and all the necessary files for this tutorial in the comment section down below. To scrape the data, I have written a small Python function, which only takes in the ticker name of a company. The ticker is basically an abbreviation for the company. So the ticker for Microsoft would be MSFT and the ticker for Apple would be AAPL and so on. We are then using the ticker name together with this URL to send out a request and we are then scraping the HTML from the site using Beautiful Soup. 
However, we are not interested in the whole HTML code, but we are rather interested in only the news table where we will find news headlines and also the corresponding dates, which we are going to take and append to a list. And we are going to do this 100 times to get exactly 100 news headlines. If you don't think this is enough, you can of course type in a higher number here, or if you think this is way too much, you can of course also put in a lower number. And our function is then returning the news headlines and a new state. I have initially used this function now to get the headlines and the date for um, news on Microsoft and I've created a first data frame with pandas. Theoretically, you could now use our function and manually type in the ticker names of the companies you are interested in. However, I think that is a bit tedious. I have found a really cool list on the internet which contains all the ticker symbols for all the companies in the S&P 500 index. And using a for loop, I'm simply looping over the S&P 500.txt file. Again, you can find the file in the comment section down below. And I'm getting the news for all the companies in that list and I'm appending uh, all the headlines and all the dates to our original pandas data frame. In the end, we will have about 50,000 news headlines and I'm going to then convert our pandas data frame to a CSV file so that we can later use this CSV file to upload it into our Kern refinery tool to label our data. Now that we have our data set together, this is where the real fun of this project begins. We head over to the Kern refinery and create a new project so that we can start labeling our data and make it usable for a machine learning algorithm. We simply start by clicking on new project and giving the project a title. I'm going to call it end-to-end -end stock news underscore tutorial. You can of course provide an optional description. I'm going to leave this blank for now and you can choose a tokenizer to pre-process your data. Our data is in English, so the configuration here is just fine, but you can also choose from one of the many different languages as well. Next up, we need to choose a file and upload it to the current refinery. I'm going to select the data set we have just created and upload it to our tool. This will only take a couple of seconds. Perfect. Now our data is stored in the Kern refinery and on the upper right here, you can see that our data is now um, being pre-processed by a tokenizer. Because our data set is relatively large, this can take a couple of minutes. After this is done, we can proceed with the labeling and processing of our data set. So I will get back to you once this step is done. Now that our tokenization is complete, we need to generate some embeddings. We need to do this because the data we provided is still in a very raw text format. However, machine learning algorithms can only work with numbers and numeric data. So generating embeddings is a form of pre-processing our data. To generate these embeddings, we click on Generate Embeddings, select the target attribute, in our case it's the column headline, select the granularity, attribute is just fine here, 
and we also need to specify a configuration. The configuration is a pre-trained hugging face model. You can select one of the very many models we have selected here for you. However, please keep in mind that all these models here only work for English text data. If your data is in a different language than English, don't worry, simply head over to huggingface.co and select one of the very cool models for different languages. You will also find very good tutorials on the topic there. For now, I'm going to select bird base uncased and generate my embeddings. Very cool. Next up, we need to specify a labeling task. For that, click on add labeling task and give the task a name. I'm going to call it labels. Nice and easy. Click on add labeling task. Now we need to specify what task type we have here. Because our machine learning algorithm needs to differentiate between multiple labels in the end, multi-class classification is already the right task. On the right hand side, you can click on plus to add your custom labels. I'm going to specify the labels positive, neutral and negative. Now you can see all the selected labels here, although the colors don't seem right. So let's give them different colors. For negative, we're going to choose a nice rose red. For neutral, let's take amber or yellow. I'm going to take amber for now. And for positive, I'm going to choose a beautiful light green. Wonderful. Now that we have created all of our labels, we can start the labeling process. Simply go to the left hand side of your screen and click on labeling. To really leverage the automatic labeling capacities of our tool, we first need to do some manual labeling by hand. Please keep in mind that you don't have to do this for every single data point in the data set. However, I would advise you to do this for at least a couple of hundreds of headlines to really get a feel for the data. This is also very important for the active learning component, as you will see in a later step. For now, let's go through some headlines and give them a label. This headline is about three Warren Buffett stocks to buy hand over fist in July. This headline looks rather clickbaity to me. So I will give it a neutral label. Let's see what the next headline looks like. The next headline is about one company taking over another. I would say this is good news. So this deserves a positive label. This headline is about 10 stocks losing a lot of their value. So this is definitely a negative label. After you have done this for a couple of headlines, you can now head over to the heuristics part of our tool. Heuristics allow you to automatically label your data. And currently we offer three different types of heuristics. The first type of heuristics I want to show you is the labeling function. Labeling functions are custom Python functions that allow you to go through your records and return some of your labels. While going through the headlines, I noticed that a lot of them are simply stating that a company is up or down by a few percentages. To capture that, I have written a regular expression. Let's code that together. To use regular expressions in Python, simply import the RE module. Next, we are going to write a Python function with the name contains underscore percent with the only argument being the record. Now we're going to use the regular expression 
to filter out headlines that are stating whether or not the company is up or down by a few percentages. For that, we are going to use re.search to go through a record and use a custom regular expression. If you are not understanding the code of the regular expression, don't worry. Regular expressions are sometimes really hard to understand. I will link a really cool site below where all of this is explained very clearly. Now we need to specify what part of the record our regular expression should go through. And our headlines are stored in the records, in the headline column. And because the records are a spacey object, we need to convert it to a string. And I'm also going to lower it just for good measure. Now let's do the same for the percentages down. Simply copy that code here and change up to down. And if our code finds a headline with the percentage up, we would like to return a positive label. And if we find a percentage down, we would like to return a negative label. Very easy, right? Let's run our function to see how many labels we can find. This might take a couple of seconds. Now our labeling function is finished and after doing some correction to the regex code, our function was able to find over 800 headlines with this expression. So that means we have 800 headlines that we don't need to label ourselves now. That's cool, right? Let's go back and see what other kinds of heuristics we can find here. Next up, I would like to show you our active learning component, which is really, really powerful. To use it, we need to specify the type of embeddings we want to use. Let's create an active learner. And as you can see, there's already a lot of code out of the box provided for you. The active learner is learning from the way that you are labeling your headlines or your data points and tries to find similarities between the data points that are already labeled and are still unlabeled and is applying the same labels to the unlabeled data points. The more headlines you will label yourself, the more accurate the active learning component will be. And the more you are labeling yourself, the higher the confidence of the active learning component will be. I am now in a different project where I have already labeled about 800 of our headlines. I then ran the active learner. And as you can see, the active learner covered all of the still unlabeled data points so that I don't have to do any of the labeling myself now. The active learner is a really, really powerful tool. And the more you label yourself, the more accurate the active learner will be. So again, I would advise you to do manual labeling on at least a couple of hundreds of data points. Last but not least, I would like to show you our zero shot component. Zero shot is still very experimental, so I won't go into too much detail here. In a nutshell, zero shot is using already pre-trained models and applying these predictions from the pre-trained models to our now unlabeled data. Because we have a very specific topic with stock news, we are not going to use the zero shot learner for now, but depending on your use case, 
you might find really, really good pre-trained models to label your data really effectively. Now you can click on Wix Supervision to apply all your heuristics to your dataset. And that's it. Congratulations. You have now created your very own dataset. As you can see, all of our data points are now 100% labeled by our weekly supervised system. Next up, I'm going to show you how you can download your dataset and convert it back to a CSV format. Head over to the settings and download your records. This might take a couple of seconds. Your data will then be downloaded as a export.json file. Back in our code editor, we can then read in that file using the pandas function readjson. Looking at our data frame, we see that we have a couple of columns, such as the headline, a manual label, if we applied one, otherwise it's none, and a headline sentiment label from our weak supervision system. Using pandas, you can then download this data frame to a CSV file. Congratulations, you have now built your own dataset completely from scratch. You can now use this dataset to build your own stock sentiment classifier, which is what we are going to do in the next part of this video. If you enjoyed watching this video, please leave a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, please let us know in the comment section down below. Thank you very much for watching and have a great day.